So when I'm in the garden, I am fairly attuned to the noises around me, the motions, especially looking for animals that might be around. And one thing that I've found is that I can almost, every time I go out, hear a hummingbird. And so there's the sound they make just from their wings flapping, there's the little chirps they make, there's this weird U dive they do and they make kind of a dive bomby sound. And so when I hear the hummingbird, I of course look for it and often see it in the hollyhocks or the uh, honeysuckle and, you know, appreciate its beauty. And so I was recently thinking about why does seeing a hummingbird bring joy to my mind? And first the thought is, well, because it's something beautiful and rare, it's, it's precious. And since we've been studying debate for the past month, I then kind of put this into syllogism form. Consider the subject hummingbird. It, it brings happiness when you see it because it is beautiful and rare. And then I thought, well, does the reason actually apply to the subject, let alone, you know, the predicate, whether there's pervasion? And I realized that I'm really habituated to thinking about hummingbirds as rare from when I was little in Michigan and would see maybe one or two total per summer. You know, I think we even had a hummingbird feeder outside and it was a special day any day that I actually saw a hummingbird. But here, I see one almost every time I go out to the garden, at least in the, the warm months. And often, Sometimes I'll just see them out the window coming and watching us during our Dharma teachings or when we're eating. So certainly they're not rare here. And even when I lived in California, they're not rare. So this is not the most profound realization. But then seeing, wow, you know, if they're not rare, what, what are they left with? Well, they have some nice iridescent feathers and so do the, the turkeys. So how excited do I get when I see a turkey if both are common and have these beautiful iridescent feathers? And clearly it's not quite the same in my mind. Though the hummingbirds are smaller, but I don't think there's pervasion that seeing something small makes you happy. That doesn't make sense either. <laughs> um, so, so it was interesting to just appreciate you know, the amount of habituation, that momentum I have in my mind from being a child and thinking, oh, these are rare, um, to now still having that happiness when they're, they're not actually that rare. So what else could I be habituated to actually seeing when I look at hummingbirds? So instead of being like, oh, it's pretty, it moves fast, isn't that neat? I could think, wow, it is suffering right now. It is so hungry. And my understanding is that hummingbirds do eat insects, but they kind of need the sugar rush from the nectar that they get from plants in order to even chase after the insects. And that it spends most of its life in air trying to get fed. And when it's looking in the windows at us, I imagine that maybe it does have that seed wishing to learn the Dharma and practice the Dharma, but it can't come in, and even if it did, it wouldn't understand the teachings. It wouldn't be able to practice them. And I imagine as it goes through its life, I don't necessarily know what type of predator could actually manage to catch a hummingbird, but I'm sure it still experiences fear from predators. Um, perhaps it catches the scent or the sight of one of our cats and, and has that really primal fear arise. And it's certainly confused. There was one day one of them looked at me from about a foot away. I was actually a little afraid of it. And I told it that I wasn't a flower, at which point it flew away. So I think they do experience some confusion in their life, looking at bright objects like the prayer flags and not knowing if it's a source of food or not. So my goal for myself is that now when I hear those hummingbirds and look for them, I don't just think, oh, how pretty, um, but that I actually look at it and think, wow, this is a sentient being who has been kind to me in prior lives. It presumably has created some good karma to be reborn in this resplendent form that it has now, um, but it is experiencing great suffering. 
I want it to be free from that suffering, and I hope that in a future life, I can benefit it, teaching it the Dharma and helping it be liberated from all of samsara. So it's going to take some habituation to really think of hummingbirds in this new way, but it will probably be more uh, beneficial for both the hummingbird and myself, and it's also more accurate. 